schools. What we're going to do here is if you have something informal you would like to bring to the group, you'd like to get a temp check, you have the floor for five minutes, <clears throat> we'll yay, we'll nay, we'll move along. And we're going to go into formal proposals and ghost uh, strategy tactics and work group things, so it should be pretty productive. So we're going to go through informals. We're going to try to keep the vice before 6.30. So I'm going to open the floor now to informals. Can we take staff? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So Isaac, what's that? Um, yeah, I just was. Uh, Rich raised his hand first. He has um, an informal proposal involving an endorsement, right? Um, there's a lot of people who have endorsement proposals. Right. Okay. So, so since we have endorsement proposals, which are what that is, is it's a formal proposal, but it just needs to be endorsed by Orva, yay or nay. That's going to take a lot less time than the formal proposals that we need to <clears throat> do stack or bring to the small work groups or what have you. So I encourage you guys, the people who have a formal proposal, it's just like, I have this event, we've all talked about it, we just want to endorse it by Orva. I encourage you to bring your formal proposal into this half hour informal proposal time so that we can do informal proposals and get quick consensus on things that need to be endorsed. <coughs> all right. So, um, I guess to reiterate, it's just something we discussed beforehand because we're seeing a lot. We, we have, um, I, today I acted as a COCO because the coordination committee uh, point of contact, Ron, is sick. And so that uh, group theoretically collects proposals before GA so the facilitation team knows what's going on, can synthesize things. We have a lot of endorsement proposals tonight. Um, and so I wanted to take those all together. Um, so if your pro informal proposal is not an endorsement, can we take now this first? <clears throat> and after that we'll also be doing... It's not an endorsement, yeah. right? And then we'll go to the endorsement proposals. Let's break the half hour down into, <coughs> into that. So if you have an informal proposal, now is the time. So once we're finished with those, we'll do simple formal endorsements at this time. Okay, so let's start with informal proposals. Does anyone have an informal proposal? Clarification. Point of clarification. So does that mean anybody who has an endorsement should therefore submit it as an informal proposal at this time? Right now we're just taking informal proposals. If we, right after informal proposals, yes. The answer is yes. Okay. Right does it make sense? Sorry. <laughs> Are people okay? <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> so, informal proposals. At this time again, who has informals? We just have. Yeah. No one. That was so easy. All right. <laughs> okay. Who has formal endorsements at this time that we can get through quickly and simply? Okay. All right. We've got Zach. Yeah. Mark. Then Rich. Bobby. Daniel. Alan. Bentley. And. And then we have a mutual. Okay, and it, it, just to be clear, we're still in the informal proposal section. Yeah. No, we're not. We close that. Okay. Now we're in formal endorsements. And how long do we have? We have 30 minutes and we have, I just heard, seven. So let's try to keep it five minutes each and we can, we can shoot. Seven endorsements? Okay. Now this is not formal proposals. Okay, this is not long formal proposals. This is just, here's what I have yesterday. Okay. All right. Good. Oh, Josh's clarification. Yeah, to be clear, these are still informal proposals. They're just a certain type that are quicker, right? So they're still consensed on and made official. Let's scrap the word informal. This is for decisions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. All right. I have flyers for this event. Um, I am from the Accessibility Coalition. We are planning a rally to dismantle ableism here on February 18th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Um, the Accessibility Coalition is a safe space for folks of any age of various abilities and disabilities, along with their allies, can discuss the issues facing differently abled people in society. We are a coalition of organizers organizations and concerned citizens whose goals are to spread awareness, eliminate the stigmatization of mental health and physical health issues, dismantle ableism, and make our world more accessible for everyone. 
We are planning a rally to dismantle ableism. The purpose of this alley uh, rally is to spread awareness and destigmatize issues surrounding differently able people. We define differently able as anyone that is physically, mentally, or psychologically diverse. This could include physical limitations, such as being in a wheelchair, mental limitations, such as autism, and psychological limitations, such as any mental health concerns, diagnosed or not. Um, we are very excited in planning our rally, but we need help. We're looking for organizations and individuals who are interested in organizing, endorsing, speaking, supporting, and tabling on February 18th. And on the flyer is our contact information. And we would like um, formal endorsement from the General Assembly of Chicago for this event, which would just basically mean that you guys um, support us and promote us. So that's it. Um, are there clarifying questions for Mark? So, are we voting on something? Or, or, we? So uh, this period is to say yes or no, or but endorses this event or not. It's very simple. So, we're going to try to come to a 90% consensus on if we endorse yes or no, we can move through these events and then we can get to formal proposals. Okay, so at this time, point of clarification. What is quorum today? I'm sorry. What is the quorum? We have 46 people. Uh -huh. 46 or 47. 47 individuals, so for 90%, we're going to have, um, let's see. Four objections. If there are five objections, we fail. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, five objections, this will not be endorsed by or votes. Try to get some stuff passed here. Okay. All right. So, all in favor of the proposal, can I get a, can I get a, a yes? And all opposed? Can I just say something with this about that? If someone has something that they don't want to share with the whole group, but just want to first tell the temp check, they can do that. I'm sorry, I'm confused. So like, that they, they, they don't feel comfortable talking about in front of the whole group. As uh -huh. to why they object, they could talk to the temp check. Excellent. Okay, so just to clarify that, if you object and you don't feel comfortable speaking to the whole group, you can talk to the temp check after about, or the proposer, of course, about your forms. Okay, so I saw zero objections. All right, we've got accessibility or by endorsed. Mm -hmm. All right. Yay. First consensus of the evening. Okay, our second formal endorsement. Anyone else want to aspire to have one? Rich. <laughs> <laughs> a proposal to officially, officially endorse the Richmond Peace Education Center, rpec.org. Uh, a little uh, info about them. Uh, they're founded in 1979. The 501c3 nonprofit organization maintains the following mission statement. The Richmond Peace Education Center works for a just and peaceful community by promoting nonviolence locally and globally. Their vision encompasses the following. Uh, the Richmond Peace Education Center works for a just and peaceful community that appreciates diversity, re resolves conflicts nonviolently, builds safety through cooperation and community, shares economic and political power equitably, takes its place within the community of Earth responsibly, and empowers all individuals to live full and abundant lives. How this correlates to ORVA. The ORVA vision statement consensed upon on 11-20-2011 states, we embrace a diversity of tactics but operate under an umbrella of nonviolence. The code of values and conducts consensed upon on December 4, 2011 states, we occupy because we are dedicated to the promotion of mutual and reciprocal empathy toward our shared and inseparable human condition. It also states, we are an all-inclusive society welcoming all who are interested in improving and demonstrating empathy toward all people. 
Uh, as such, the RPEC mission and values seem to align with the values of the General Assembly of Occupy Richmond, Virginia. Therefore, I propose we, the General Assembly of Occupy Richmond, Virginia, officially endorse the Richmond Peace Education Center. Okay, so um, we have a point of clarification. Um, I, however, it needs to be said, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've got lots of questions, so. Okay, all right, so. So, however, however it needs to be, like, uh, addressed. Point of clarification. Okay, um, why is it that, uh, that Occupy Richmond is endorsing other groups, and what does that endorsement, uh, really mean, and are we, what part are we endorsing, because, I had issues back in the 2008 election when when this organization, Richmond Peace Education Center, was was outwardly endorsing a pro-war candidate, uh, um, uh, Barack Obama. So I'm wondering if we really want to tie ourselves in with with something that says one thing while while doing another. And, and I've got many, 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 many more things. So just because I've seen this. a lot of hands, can I get a tent check on Chris's question slash comment? Do are people in, are people in support of that comment? comment. Are people comment. in support? <laughs> are people in support? <laughs> Bring it back. Is, are every, is everyone here in support of Chris's comment about endorsing and endorsing a group and a organization as opposed to our own event? I'm seeing a significant amount of of comments. <laughs> so we're going to table that at this time, and we're going to, if you have if you have things that you want to address with Rich about that, I encourage you, point of process. Because it was still a proposal on the table, wouldn't it make sense to first to check the proposal before you table it to see if it's even close to consensus? <laughs> right on, okay. Here we go. So, <clears throat> temp checking Rich's proposal, formal endorsement, for ORVA to formally endorse the Richmond Peace Education Center. How do we feel about that? Can I get a temp check? All in favor? All, all opposed? Okay, um, these are interesting hand signals. All opposed? <laughs> and all stand aside. Can I see all opposed again? One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's, so that's that did not pass. All right. So, point of information. Can I ask Rich a question about the amendment or about the? Before you turn to the floor, we have a point of clarification. <coughs> is there a room to qualify the endorsement? What? Is there a room to qualify the endorsement? Just so that any concerns regarding the approval or endorsement might be taken care of? So yeah, like um, I think that can be an ongoing thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, at this time I'm going to suggest for formal proposals, we're going to have a little bit of a different structure tonight where we're going to get as much face and face time as we can. We're going to break into a small working groups for the formal proposals. So, Rich, if you want to change that into something. Whoa, 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 no, sorry, that doesn't work at all. No, um, okay. Sorry guys, everyone's really confused. I'll just explain the structure here for what we're doing so we can have it as simple as possible. For the formal proposals, we're all familiar with this process, present the formal proposal, there's clarifying questions, we get this big log jam of this huge bureaucracy of all these people. So for formal proposals this evening, someone's gonna have a formal proposal, and then we're gonna have clarifying, and then in between the presentation of the formal proposal and the clarifying questions and temp check, we're gonna break into small groups, not working groups or anything like that, but you're all gonna need groups of like 10 people or something like that. And then the formal proposal proposer can come around and the people within the small working groups can talk and have questions and can answer them face to face. All right, point of process. Uh, th this hasn't, this, this format hasn't been uh, consensus upon by the group. I, this is just a proposal. I just want to point that out. Thank you. You're right. You're right. Clarification. Clarification. Are you saying that the process of going through the list of endorsement proposals is, is now finished? No, not at all. I was just explaining the format because everyone seemed really confused. We're having a May day. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the heck is going on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How about this? Let's continue with formal endorsements. I will try to not 
um, to not lead a process that has not been consensed on by the group. We will continue as is, as we always have with the general assembly. <coughs> we'll stay in the larger body for formal proposals. All right, so we're two endorsements Point of process. through. One was endorsed, one was not. Point of process. If we're maintaining the same process, can we now follow that process and go to an open stack for discussion on that proposal? No. No, we're not doing that. Any formal proposal or formal endorsements because we'll be here way past the period. We have five more members in that form, just formal endorsements. Pro process. <clears throat> Let me open that up to the group. Let's do this. <clears throat> All right. General Assembly body, for, in for, for formal endorsements, would you like to take stack on these things? Can I see yes or no? All in favor, taking stack on We're currently in a half hour block of formal endorsements. And if we want to do taking stack and having a bunch of discussion about each point, we can. Or we can continue to move forward where we just yay or nay the formal endorsement. Yeah. Okay, so all in favor of having discussions after each point, having stacks after each formal endorsement. Clarification? Could that include, if needed, that we don't have to take a stack on everything? So the a option check for on, stack. Yeah. Yes, okay, okay. so let Thank me you. qualify. We have the option, what we are voting on right now is the process that we are in. Do we want to have the option to take staff on each one of these formal endorsements? Can I see all in favor? Can I see all opposed? One opposed, one, s what is that? I guess if this is opposed. We've got two opposed, three opposed, four opposed, five opposed. Um, I don't know, it was a, my bad. So Sorry, all opposed to the option to take staff right now. Who is opposed? Clarification. Clarification question. So is what we're voting on right now changing our process back to what our process is supposed to be from what we were suggesting at the beginning of the endorsement process? Or is what we're voting on now This is exactly... I've got a direct response. If, if I, I mean, no, we don't do that. I <laughs> All right, order. Here's what we're doing. We are at informal proposals. We have so many simple, stamp it, endorse formal proposals that I wanted to bring that into this time. So we're now in formal endorsement. Oh my God, the semantics. I'm sorry, that's crazy. We're in a period right now where we are formally endorsing, yay or nay, simple formal proposals, essentially. Okay? So I'm going to leave the option open for stack, and you guys can keep this as bureaucratic as you want. This is up to the body. I encourage you to check your heart and your mind and keep it moving as smoothly and fluidly as possible. All right, so Rich's formal endorsement was opposed. Would anyone like to take stack? Would anyone, does anyone have a comment or want to start a stack on his proposal for us to formally endorse the Richmond a point. It, weren't, weren't there over five objections yeah. to, to it, so? Um, opposed, excellent, all right. So we're going to table that, and we're going to go on to the next formal endorsement. Okay. Now, I just got some really quick questions. Would it, would it be more efficient to, like, especially with endorsements, to have a research, a lot of research done on them? So we, no, I mean, not, not like in, in the middle of this session, obviously, but like, I mean, I, mean I, I think we have to be careful who we endorse because, like, what Chris Dorsey brought up, if this person supported a, a, a very pro war candidate, then I don't think that we should endorse them. I, and I think that would be that would be really really bad. So I think we need to really really think about who we endorse before we endorse them. And we shouldn't just yay or nay them. We need to have discussions about them because that's important. All right. Let's see. Okay. So we're going to Okay, all right. The next formal proposal for an endorsement for a simple endorsement. Who is third? Daniel. Isaac Stack? Daniel. Daniel. Where is he? Oh, he had to leave, so I took it. So can right. we just wait till it's my turn and I'll I'm still writing it. Okay, all right. Fourth on stack. Bobby. Bobby. Oh, I don't need that. It's real quick, real simple. Apparently, um, uh, it seems that we're one of the few occupations that has not formally endorsed Occupy Congress. Somehow it was overlooked, so I would just like to seek uh, to or propose that we officially endorse Occupy Congress. 
Any objection? I just have a clarifying question. Was not the, I mean, this is like an indirect way of endorsement, but was not the post of Occupy Congress on our page? Isn't that like saying? Correct. Guys, go. Yeah, but um, the problem that happened is the uh, list that Occupy Congress ex itself compiled. Uh, next to Occupy Richmond, it states that we have unofficially endorsed them. So. Yes, so. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this one's pretty simple. All in favor of endorsing no, Occupy Congress no officially, I'd like a yay. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyone opposed? Consensed. <laughs> yes. All right. Fourth, uh, fourth formal endorsement, Alan. So, I propose to support and endorse Marty Jewell's ordinance, removing sunset closing and, and camping prohibitions from Canal Plaza. Or of support for this ordinance does not indicate acceptance of what we consider to be the unconstitutional local restrictions that are imposed on free speech. But rather, this endorsement is simply applauding that <coughs> this ordinance is a first step and just the beginning. All right, so this one is a little bit more complex so we're going to take first clarifying questions. Do you have the full language of the ordinance? I sure did. Right. I have your spine. Um, bookmark. To amend chapter 26, article 4, division 1 of city code by adding therein a new section 26-405 concerning Canal Plaza for the purpose of exemption of the property known as Canal Plaza from City Code Section 26-309, which prohibits camping and camping, sleeping, tenting, and lying on benches in a city park. And from City Code 26-397, and its prohibition against the public being in city parks outside of the hours during which the park is open. Open to 24 hours a day, available for camping, lying on benches, and sleeping. So I've got two clarifying, three clarifying questions. We've got Sir, go ahead. So Alan, what you're saying is that this particular endorsement is not so much whether one agrees or disagrees, but we're just lauding Mr. Bill <laughs> for his initiative and his work in this area. My sense of it is, and the reason why I'm asking, and if it, and it, if it becomes too controversial, oh, we can do a temp check, is that by making the statement that it is a good first step, but it's only that, and we support that legislation being passed as a first step. That's my sense of what I try to put into the language. If there's a better way to say that. I agree with Chris when you spoke last week that the Constitution trumps all of it, but this is just the first step. and. If we can get a first step, if we can get any changing on the scales of the way things are kept, I think it's worth it. That's that's my sense of it. I hope that answers your question. So we're trying to... Sure. <laughs> okay, all right. Rich, clarification? Uh, is the endorsement uh, contingent upon that wording remaining the same? I think the concept is more than the words. Of, of that park opening up. I mean, I, I, we can get into the, all those nooks and crannies of it. I tried to keep it simple. And, and the most important thing to me is that while there is support for this ordinance, it is in no way, shape, or form saying we accept the limitations that you still have in effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's simply applauding this and supporting, you know, this ordinance. And that, what for me, what that does for us is that it allows some public publicity mechanisms to to tilt it towards it, it having a chance of passing. Because there is work to be done, and that would allow the, the mechanism of Occupy, Richmond's media to be used to, to say, we endorse this and to spread the word on how we can help get it passed. Okay, 
For those, and that's an opt in and out. Just like some people feel like we shouldn't vote, some people think we shouldn't this. It's an opt in or out for each and every person, but it makes the, the mechanism of Occupy Richmond available to the effort of those who want to put time into seeing if we can get this passed. Okay. At this time, I'm going I'm to put the time limit, the cap is three minutes for, for all answers and, and comments and questions. Okay, so we're still in points of clarification. Chris was next. Okay, um, my clarification question is um, uh, about the actual language and uh, um, kind of uh, reiterating what, what people have been saying throughout this meeting about if we're going to do something like endorse a legislation of a political candidate or endorse language that could really backfire in some sorts of ways, and I'll get into that in my, this like connected clarifying question is, what if we endorse something that is basically already covered by the, by the First Amendment that we successfully, uh, um, you know, challenged for, for several weeks, and uh, what if this is going to be you know, if we endorse something that we don't, that doesn't really even, you know, shouldn't really even apply and it fails, like that's going to be really, that's going to be really bad. I don't know about, you know, if we start participating in the codification of restrictions on the First Amendment, I guess, is how I should have said it shorter. Um, I'm a little concerned about that and I think that's important so I can clarify if I wasn't clear. Thank you for that comment. Okay, all right, next on staff, we've got Stephen, and then Graham. Um, yeah, I mean, I pretty much just second what Chris just said. Uh, for the most part, you know, it's, it's pretty much a reiteration of the idea that there's going to, you know, we're legitimizing any limitation on free speech um, by pursuing um, some sort of exemption. And to be honest, I don't, I don't particularly see uh, the strategic goal, I understand if people want to put their efforts into it, then they're more than welcome to, but um, to try to gain that as a as a, <clears throat> a place to speak your mind and, and act however you want, going through the processes, um, to me, not only seems counterintuitive, but just uh, not strategically sound. All right, so next is time we've got Graham. So my question follows well, I think, on the heels of those two being, if the goal were to pass something and win something as an occupation, you know, on this, in this area, <coughs> could we make sure our endorse, endorsement says, would you be willing to amend the endorsement to say that we absolutely do not um, accept any limitation on free speech anywhere else either, but that we support the creation of this zone because the entire system is broke anyways. Um, I, I thought I tried to put language similar to that and we could refine it. Um, what I don't want is for this to take up a, a huge chunk of the assembly tonight. If, it, if there's reasonable agreement that within our ranks there's a diversity of tactics that we've endorsed repeatedly on a number of issues. This would be, I, from what I'm, what I'm asking for, and if I need to sit down and, and rewrite language, I will. To, I'm hoping that we can have this, this legislation endorsed with a very strong statement that we do not see this as a, a limitation on what we declare to be our guaranteed rights, but we applaud it as a first step at removing restrictions. And, and, and it's an opt-in and up. For those who want to go to the voting booth, go do it. For those who want to hurrah their candidates, go do it. For those who want to opt out of the voting system, go do that. A diversity of tactics. And if, if, it can, if it can garner that kind of support within the... There's, there's an advantage to those who care about it and would like to see this as a first step um, by having access to the Orva media mechanism to help publicize for those who want to to take this on and try and get it passed. I don't want to make it complicated. If it's really, if we can do a temp check on it to see if there's sentiment in taking it that way, I'll be satisfied and, I'll, and either way it goes. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to yay or nay Allen's
formal endorsement as the language is written. If it is opposed, which given all of the qualments and questions we just heard, if it is opposed, we can redo, Alan, I would encourage you to redo the language and we can bring that back up in formal proposal time. So we're about to end this block, take a break, and then we'll officially be in formal proposals anyway. All right, so at this point, all who yay Alan's formal endorsement language as is, all who nay or are opposed. I see more than four. Are not stand aside, this is all opposed. All opposed. <laughs> We've got one, two, okay, three, Jeremy. four, five, opposed. Jeremy. All right, so that's table, so we can read the language. Um, that can be brought back up at formal proposals, if so. For those right. who opposed, could you read back to me and if there's a way to accommodate that? All right. At this point, we're going to take a ten-minute break. We're going to reconvene at six forty. By the way, there's more bread downstairs, guys. And first, we have a piece of spoken word from Vanessa. All right. So we have a bit of spoken word here tonight from our own Vanessa, kind of bring it back into the spirit of solidarity. So once we're all seated, we'll begin that. Oh, okay. about the confusion between informal and formal. We are now about to go into official formal proposals. Before that, I'd like to give the floor to Vanessa. All right, I'm here. All right, everyone. Um, so we have Martin Luther King's birthday tomorrow, and I know that a lot of people are really inspired by this man as a figure. Um, I think that if he was alive, I'm sure a lot of us would be with the Irish movement and stand on this movement. Um, and Occupy Wall Street in general. So I just found a few words of his that I thought are really appropriate to this moment that I wanted to read out loud in my own intonation or whatever. Um, so here it is. This is actually from a speech that he gave. It's called Beyond Vietnam, A Time to Break the Silence. He delivered this on April 4th, 1967 at Riverside Church in New York City. Some of us have already begun to break the silence of the night. We found that the calling to speak is often a vocation of agony, but we must speak. We must speak with all the humility that is appropriate to our limited vision, but we must speak. And we must rejoice as well, for surely this is the first time in our nation's history that a significant number of its people have chosen to move beyond the prophesying of smooth patriotism to the high grounds of firm dissent, based on the mandates of conscience and the reading of history. Perhaps a new spirit is rising among us. If it is, let us trace its movements and pray that our own inner being may be sensitive to its guidance. For we are deeply in need of a new way beyond the darkness that seems so close around us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember. I'm old enough to remember that. And I will tell you what, this, and you people, you feel like that to me. Thank you're doing you. It, you're doing it again, and you're doing right. Thank you. Those were terrible times, and were turbulent, and we're headed for it again. And you guys are on the front end of it. And you're doing the right thing. All of them. Thank you. Okay. All right. I think we have one last lost work group announcement that got Ms. Jonathan Cunningham. Yes, okay. Um finance has policy to announce our funds every sun every Sunday, and we forgot to do that, so there's nothing here. Considering what we pulled in tonight, which is only four dollars. We now have three hundred and five dollars in the account. Thirty-four. Yay! Is that the one percent? When does finance meet?
Uh, we have, most of finance has been out of town for the holidays, but we are starting to meet again on Sundays. Okay. Until we get policy completely hammered out and we can all stop worrying about it. All right. Thank you. So, at this time, we're going to do formal proposals. It is the traditional, just totally as usual general <laughs> assembly process just in case anyone's confused so how that works is proposal rocks up they give their formalized proposal and then we're going to temp check it if there are not any questions or points of information which of course there will be i'm asking not for qualments i would like you to really that's not acceptable we're going to have questions we're going to have points of information all right so formal proposals at this point, we will take staff for this. So, who has formal proposals? Isaac, can we keep track here? Yeah. Um, Chris, and then Bobby, um, Bentley, and Alan, and Jonathan. Yeah. Okay, so just to make sure that's clear again, we've got Chris, Bobby. Put your hands Chris, up again, guys. Chris, Bobby, Bobby Colin, Alan. Alan. Bentley, Jonathan. All right. Okay. So, Chris, you've got four. Okay. Okay. I am proposing uh, for Occupy Richmond the draft statements to be hand delivered to both Virginia Senators Mark Warner and Jim Webb's downtown Richmond offices. These statements will be respectful yet highly critical of both politicians' votes for the National Defense Authorization Act. 2012. Um, and this is a law that grants President Obama or any other future president the authority to order the military to detain anyone indefinitely without a trial for simply committing the legally defined offense of acting belligerently against the United States. Um, this statement will demand an explanation from both senators as to why they have used their valuable time to make laws such as this, along with many others, that are against the interests of the people. When they, have, when they have the obligation to work for the people. Uh, this statement will also ask that uh, staffers from both senators have separate meetings with uh, representatives popularly chosen by uh, the General Assembly, and that these meetings will be able to be videotaped by Occupy Richmond to ensure full transparency. Um, and then this will be conducted uh, just the same way that we met with the mayor, and uh, we would pick eight representatives um, and to maximize participation, any representative uh, that would be meeting with one senator could not be a representative to meet with the other senator. And, um, and the 90% General Assembly consensus must be reached for each line in order to be included on the official final version of the statements issued to both senators. And that's, that's it. All right, clarification at this time. Could you repeat that last part you just said? Um, a 90% General Assembly consensus must be reached for each line in order to be included on the official uh, version of the statements issued to the Senators. All right, Harry, we've got a point of clarification, and then Kat. What is the purpose of doing this? Is to it just to inform them that no, we are relieved by this? To demand an explanation and to demand a meeting. Okay. Just to just <coughs> the demand. And to record it. What's that? And to record it and publicize it. Yes. We've got a point of clarification back. So would these be letters, would these letters be signed from Occupy Richmond? Yes, it would be, it would have to be uh, in everything that could be, you know, ten check line by line, just like when we give a statement to the mayor. Alright, Bobby? Are you going to form uh, a working group or any group or whatever to help you draft this letter? <coughs> um, every month, sure. Or were you thinking about doing it going around? No, I wanted to do it just, just like the same process, but we met into different groups. Okay. And, uh, we did, I mean, we did it through a GA last time, we just met with, with different groups. Uh, I remember Sir was with me, uh, I forgot who else, a lot of other people. <laughs> Do we have more questions? Alan? For the larger group of people, this is, question mark, the same process that was followed with the communication to the mayor. I mean, there's nothing that's been left out that was done then. 
that is not in here. This is exactly the same process, but it's on NDAA and Senator, the two senators. Am I correct in this perspective? Yes. Thank you. All right, so at this time, if I don't see any more questions, it, what is that sign? Friendly uh, amendment. Okay, um, friendly <laughs> amendment. Um, the, first, let's actually... take the language as is and do a temp check. Yeah. That's a point of process. Um, point of process. And the friendly amendment will have to come after the uh, the, the, the the initial temp language temp check or pass <laughs> me. Okay. All right. So language as is, we're going to take. This proposal. Can I get just a tent check? All in favor? All confused or stand aside? All nays. All right. We can say. <laughs> <laughs> you can smile. Oh, right. that was that was a just kidding. All right, that was a tent check. Okay, so now official yays or nays. Can I get language as is point of process? Uh, we should talk about concerns now. Talking about concerns. Okay. I was going to see if we could consent it as was, and then there would inevitably be objections, and at that point we could go into comments and questions. Um, all right, we're going to take the language as is, and we're going to everyone yes or no. At the point where there are objections, we will go into comments and questions. The language as is, all in favor, all in disagreement. That's four. Um, and I'll stand aside. All right, so we have four objections. So at this point, we'll take <coughs> um, friendly amendments um, and more questions or comments. Harry. Um, would you be willing um, to, uh, shoot, of course now I forgot what I was going to say. Um, can you give me one minute to remember what I was going to say? Yes. Uh, yeah. All right, is there anyone else that wants to make changes to the language of this formal proposal of the VIC? I would like to open for consideration other language other than belligerence as being the criteria by which the president would rendition anyone. I'm sorry? I think you had the word belligerence in there. Yeah, that's one minute that said that. And, and if we could possibly consider other language, which is certainly more vague and more arbitrary, because that is how the president would arbitrarily identify anyone as a threat. And I think the initial language in the bill was uh, national interest. It spoke to something about national interest and whether or not people were seen as threats to the national interest. I mean, the statement that that was really that wasn't part of my that was really just. Given what's saying with the, the act says, I should probably shouldn't have maybe said that. I'm sorry, I'm confusing anybody. I mean, are you. Would you be willing anything to else? Yeah. yeah, basically, my proposal is we just we, we issue that we. Um, that we. that we. Um, that we just. You don't have to re propose anything right now, but would you be willing to consider that? Yeah, I mean, it was just the line that was. Yeah, yeah. Right. critical mission. Okay, so there's room to work on this. And in the back? Uh, to clarify, that last vote voted it down based on current attendance, right? Yes, it was four. Um, although I think we should take a, we should do a recount. 35, um, what's the last? <laughs> you got a couple back there. <laughs> You're right, it was five. And the sentence has changed from earlier in the day. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, I would really want to count people. 38. 38. Okay. 30. 39. All right. We're going to round that up to four. If there's four that nay it, it's going to be, it's, it didn't pass. All right. Um, we've got a point of information in the back. This was mostly in regards to the VAC, uh, what he was talking about with the belligerent acts. That is the language of the bill, which is kind of what's so terrifying is that it says any belligerent act can this, you know, someone who does that can be scooped up and tossing one ton of us. So I believe that I believe that that's what he was highlighting. And yeah, yeah also, my point was, yeah, was, it's, it's so vague, like what's belligerent is not defined. That was my whole point. Right. But also to bounce off of that, um, so so really what you're proposing is that we just begin the process of writing these letters, and that's the nuts and bolts of your proposal. And you're not proposing any language that we would use in constructing those letters, you're just proposing that we write some letters. Signed Occupy Richmond. 
uh, I mean, about about his bill. Yes. Cool. All right. Yes. Sir. <coughs> okay. And um, just that the letter yes. asked. I'm sorry. Yeah. And just that the letter asked for a meeting with staffers with the senators. Both of these senators supported this bill, by the way. Yeah. Okay, so we've got Will and then Alan. <coughs> At a certain point, I'm going to cut stack and we're going to go on to the next proposal. Um, I would like to remind you, you've got three minutes, and Vanessa's going to put up her one minute finger. If you guys are going in for or approach at the after two minutes, you're approaching the one minute. She's going to throw one minute fingers. So you guys know. Okay, so next on staff was Bobby. Um, I would just like to suggest that it seems to me that most of us are in favor of the overall body of this proposal. Yes. Um, and that we go ahead and perhaps form um, an affinity group to help draft these letters. Yeah, can we temp check Bobby's suggestion? All in favor of forming a working group to work on these letters. Real quick, this isn't a formal vote, though, right? This is a temp check. Okay, all right. And, uh, all right, so moving on from there, I'm gonna, what I'm hearing is that we have a formal proposal. It's kind of log jammed about semantics, and we have Bobby's suggestion that we just make it into an affinity group or we all, the formal proposal is not about the specific language of the letter, the formal proposal is if we would like to form a group to work on these letters. Does that keep in vain with your suggestions? Yeah, I mean anything in the letter would have to be approved line by line by a, by a quorum. Okay, and I think that's a little bit down the road. Yes. So, in all interested in forming, we don't, have to, we don't have to vote to form a working group. So if you are interested in forming a work group about these letters with Chris in response to the NDAA, you are welcome to do so. All right, okay. So we're gonna move on to the next, thank you very much. Okay, so see Chris if you're interested. All right, next formal proposal. I'm just, I'm just trying to keep, uh, keep track of all the that, so did that pass? Yeah. There was a pro no, it did not. There was a proposal for, for formal language that evolved into a working group. So it got channeled to a working group. Mm -hmm. Yes, it did. Okay. okay, next formal proposal. Sorry. Next formal proposal on stack we've got is Chris and Bobby. Okay. Um, so this is kind of a two part proposal. Okay, first, uh, we would like to propose that Occupy Richmond consensus that the Supreme Court of the United States decision, FEC versus Citizens United, is wrong and unconstitutional, being that corporations are not natural persons. Temperature's looking pretty positive. All right, let's see if we can push that one right on through. All in favor of Bobby's proposal? Do you have a short time? Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, it's half of it. Um, we propose that Occupy Richmond consensus that the Supreme Court of the United States decision, FEC, FEC versus Citizens United, is wrong and unconstitutional, being that corporations are not natural persons. And second, to officially create a new affinity group seeking to overturn Citizens United and corporate personhood. Okay, I'm going to step in, and once again, we don't need to vote on if we want to create a working group or not. So let's just take that first one, make a decision, and then if we want to create a work group from that, we'll go from there. Okay, so we're going to vote on, let's, we already did a temp check, it seemed pretty positive. Are there any questions or points of information on that first proposal, Rich? So if the technique was positive, let's go straight into the vote then. But people are having questions. So, can we just do a temp check? An actual yeah, temp check? let's do a real temp check. All right, Bobby, will you read number one again, and then we're going to do a temp check? Okay. We propose that Occupy Richmond consensus that the Supreme Court of the United States decision, FEC versus Citizens United, is wrong and unconstitutional, being that corporations are not natural persons. All in favor? All stand aside. All in disagreement. All right. So we're going to vote from there. Unless Wait, did we, anybody have questions? Unless we have questions, oh, okay. points of clarification, or points of information, sir. Uh, the only suggestion I might make is that, that 
describe it as unconstitutional. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm not qualified to say whether it is or isn't. You might consider changing or leaving that word out. Okay. Uh, we all know damn well it's wrong. Whether it's constitutional or not, <laughs> who knows. Okay, I see Chris's hand. Uh, clarifying question. I, I might, uh, um, in my opinion, just contradict that. I think it's obviously kind of unconstitutional. Um, and the only reason, I definitely think that it's unconstitutional and we should oppose it, but my point of clarification is like that there's many other things that we should oppose and I'm not sure why this is going to be the first one, but, but, uh, uh, but that's my understanding, so. Can I respond to that? Okay. Um, the reason why we're proposing this is because we're forming a working group right now um, to seek to amend the Constitution. We're working on it in the city level to take it to the city council to put that forward, the move to amend, as well as on the state level. So, and since Additionally, we haven't... Networking it, right. who occupies and in the hopes of getting it on the agendas on all city councils, on board supervisors and town councils, and to try and get it on the legislative agenda <coughs> now. We have until Friday to get it introduced. Through the state legislature. This is assembly session. That's right. why we're asking for this kind of statement. All right. We have point of information, Rich. That can, I, can, you, can I further respond to that? Please do. Um, people have energy and passion for something, and so they're pushing it forward. It's, Anyone can do this at any time in any general assembly uh, by forming, you know, they can form a work group, they have the energy and passion around something, and if they acquire support um, and consensus upon support, then it, I don't want to see it as like this is the first thing, and I don't think that should be a detractor. I don't know if that was point of information, but thank you very yeah, much. Well, that's okay, so language <laughs> as is, we're going to take Bobby and Alan's proposal. We're going to formally vote on it now. All in favor? All opposed? All stand aside? Sorry, that's time check. All right, we didn't have. All opposed? I see no op I see one opposition, and that's it. All right, consensed on. If you guys are interested in working in an affinity group with Bobby and Alan on this, please see them after the meeting. And point of clarification? Um, we have a lot of work groups that do a lot of the general stuff. Can we codify the language between work group and affinity group, please? I'm sorry, I meant to say. We're an affinity group only because we're going to be working with other organizations and we don't want Occupy Richmond to be seen as being co-opted by other organizations. So that's not why it's an official work. That's why it's not an official work. Uh, the, the, my question is uh, mainly it's just uh, us keeping it relatively simple. Like we have 10 or 12 work groups, not be like forming a new work group for other specific issues. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That point of clarification? Yeah. On the issue of forming a work group or group of any kind, was that part of this proposal? It was, but it was cut out because that doesn't need the General Assembly's oh, approval to gotcha. for people to start organic projects. That helps us if we get tied down if you're actually to start our own things. Okay. All right. So um, all right, so can I have a name for that affinity group or that project so we know what to call it? So far it's just called the Move to Amend Richmond Virginia. The Move to Amend Richmond, Virginia has been formally endorsed by Orva, and if you are interested, please see Alan or Bobby at your convenience. All right, so. Information, the, the horse is out of the barn and in the front of the pack going around the track. Please join us. <laughs> All right, uh, next on staff we have, So, back to the canal ordinance. I would like this to be handled, and you can take it any way you want, but my sense of it is, let me read the revised language, temp check it, if it supports and goes as is, I don't want to bow down when there's so many other things, but if there is a sense of the General Assembly that's supportive of this language, 
let's go for it, but y'all can handle it however you want. That's my sense. Orvin declares that the United, the First Amendment of the United States Constitution supersedes any statutory restrictions imposed upon it. Orvin recognizes the core importance of first freedoms to a healthy democracy. We urge our city council members to recognize their oath to protect and defend the Constitution. Orva applauds and endorses this an ordinance as a first step in what we urge to be a full removal of all local time and place restrictions. Before any questions or anything, just as is, we're doing it <coughs> all in favor. All stand aside and all opposed. All right, so at this time, points of information or clarification on Alan's formal proposal. Um, do we know for a fact that their oath as, a, excuse me, as city council members actually yeah. has to do with the Constitution or all of us? They do also, so I don't know the Constitution. Cool. The city council. All right, and Will? Uh, just to clarify, we, have, we did, just, did just endorse the Marty Jules ordinance per his... That was Temption. 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 Not yet. We're still in the Marty Jules ordinance. All right. Do we have any other points of clarification or any information? Chris Dorsey. Yeah, this is the point of information, and uh, um, I put the first part in there that the Constitution supersedes other people who were in agreement and, and added other parts, but um, again, strategically, uh, um, what the, what this means, I, I, I don't I don't think it's a good idea to, to jump on on board with this one, you know, if it passes or if it fails. Um, it really is just kind of putting shackles on something that's already guaranteed to us and uh, kind of codifying into the the fake professional wrestling legislation that they put forward. So, I don't have anything to do with it, but... And Alan, you want to that? Y'all can go wherever you want, I'll say it again, but my hope was to see whether there was sufficient, in regards to Chris's position, I agree with you 101%. I've already had three criminal charges brought against me because I refused to allow them to place that on me. I think that this proposal passive does not require any of you to do anything other than sit back and say, oh, I don't want to work on that legislation. But for those of us who believe strongly or mildly or somewhat interestedly, that, that maybe, maybe let us work on it and let us have official <laughs> applause and endorsement of our efforts. We are all right. Um, I got a point of clarification on that. Mm -hmm. Just a okay. clarifying question. We're going to take stack on Alan's proposal, and then I'm going to cut the Do stack. Do we want so, to take stack, please? I'm sorry. Do we want to take stack on Alan's proposal? Temp check. All in favor? All not in favor? <laughs> guys, you guys are giving me like, no, this is not a check. <laughs> 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 all right, so all in favor of, of taking stack on Alan's proposal? Put your fingers sky high. All opposed to taking stack. Alright, so we're not going to take stack. Um, Alright, so point of information. Point of information or clarification. Clarification Excuse question. Excuse me, point of process. Sorry. 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 I'm just wondering when stack became optional during the formal proposal process. That's when everyone has the time to come up and freely express themselves about proposals. And I don't know, I think restricting that free speech goes against everything we're here to do. All right, I'm sorry. I will rename this no, time slow, while we are taking... Good point. All right, so while we are taking questions and points of information, we are currently in stack. I apologize. Okay, um, do we have any more questions or points of information on Alan's proposal? I don't know what the point is, but Madam um, Facilitator, if this is going to take an additional, an additional large chunk of time. I will withdraw because I do not want this to consume the night. Okay, so however that plays out, 
Uh, I'll give it, I'll give you a little rope to hang us all over. <laughs> 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 all right, the horse is out of Alan's barn. Ooh, if you are interested in Marty Jules' proposal, please see Alan and working to support it. What about? I thought we were voting. Yeah, all right, let's <laughs> vote on. Oh, we're discussing. We're discussing. All right, Alan. Yeah. I want you to say, state your language clearly and formally, and then we're going to formally vote on it. <laughs> the point of order was: Are we required to do a stack? I think General Assembly can do whatever it wants personally. Since we're in stack right now, is there anything else in stack? Got a process. Before we vote? Point of process. Okay, so I'm getting this straight and then I'm, I'm going to say how it's disorganized. Uh, is we have a proposal <coughs> on the board. Uh, we are supposed to have a chance to discuss it afterwards, or uh, then vote on it. Then, after voting, be able to do friendly amendments, and then that section will be over. Is that correct? Does that actually have friendly amendment on there? Because I don't see it. Harry, who are you asking? I'm asking the General Assembly. Is that correct? Because if we are not doing that, and if that is incorrect, That's then we're not going by. Okay. So let's temp check, just, just reaffirmation. Everyone's on the same page. It's not up for question, but we're just that everyone appreciates that information. Temp check. The order is proposals. Then we're in stack with information and questions. Then we vote. Then we have friendly amendments if needed. All right, temp check, all in favor, that we continue on with the procedure. Okay, all right, so, Alan, I need formal language for this to continue. Orville declares that the First Amendment of the United States Constitution supersedes any statutory restrictions opposed upon, imposed upon. Orville recognizes the core importance of first freedoms to a healthy democracy, we urge our city council to recognize their oath to protect and defend the Constitution. Orva applauds and endorses this ordinance as a first step in what we urge to be a full removal of all local time and place restrictions upon the First Amendment rights. Back in the day in the original GAs when we had staff, people would come up here and they would speak and it would be like one, two, three, four, and they'd be in a line and they'd each have their three minutes. Um, so I would encourage you at this time, if you have information, if you have clarification, stack is open to you, then you will vote. Okay, so you're keeping stack? Yeah. Um, Bobby and Rich raised their hands. Okay. Chris has had his hand up for a long time. Yeah. I'll just go on stack whenever I put it in. All right, so stack is up here. You guys want to go ahead with your questions or your information? Just speak with you. I'll just cipher that one. So, forget it. Okay, we can, uh, or we can just continue remaining I'll, seated and I'll be I'll, I'll, I'll do stack first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, since Rich has been first. Oh, stack. Rich, go, go, go ahead and go stack first. Rich, maybe. Give me three minutes. Um, one, one, one concern I have about this proposal is the timeline in terms of it being presented the night before um, the, work, the, work. the council meeting. Um, the council meeting is tomorrow, right? No, a week out. A week out, so we don't have to decide on this tonight then, in theory. Yeah. Um, okay, that changes things. Um, <laughs> So my, my, my concern was that it was too short before, assuming there was a council tomorrow, but so we have time to think about this then, and I'm glad that we have time to think about this, um, and we don't actually have to consensus upon this tonight, because I think it's something we should process, because I do see positives and negatives to this, uh, which have been enumerated. Um, the positive you know, being that's a step in the right direction, the negative being that we could hamstring ourselves um, by supporting something, and, and, and by then supporting it, council can be like, oh, we've given you this free speech section. We don't need to give you any others. Okay, Chris Dorsey is next this time. Yeah, just piggybacking on what Rich said. Um, anything that's, that's contained within this legislation 
is already guaranteed to us. Uh, my main concern is the history, the back history of, of what this has become. Um, you know, originally we were supposed to have legislation put forward to allow the occupation to continue or recodify into city law recognized by city council um, for us to keep the occupation at, at Canal Plaza going. And now the occupation isn't there. We don't really need it as desperately. And we are kind of agreeing to bring this back up when, when we really don't have anything to gain out of it, as mentioned, and lots to lose. Except for what we do have to gain is we have, you know, to uh, um, prop up a particular politician on our back uh, yet again, uh, same one and who has really kind of jammed us up in the past on this particular issue. So, um, that's what's happened. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't really want to, uh, um, I don't really want to do that, but uh, um, whatever group things. All right, so Harry, are you next on staff? I think so. Yes, Double sure. Check. Okay. Motion to table until Thursday. <laughs> I, I mean, the one who told me that's the right way to do it, right? I, I asked. Because <laughs> okay, this process really confuses the hell out of me <laughs> most days. Okay, but so I'm motioning to uh, formally uh, table this until Thursday, allowing us time to discuss and reevaluate. Second. Second. Roger. All in favor? All opposed? Alright, so we're still on stack. And who was next? So, There's a point of process here. Point of process? <clears throat> I'm Heron from Occupy the Roads. In relation to this gentleman's statement, I wanted to do, uh, give my perspective that we're all in here fighting for the same things by and large. And uh, if we make things just a little bit easier for ourselves at any given moment, it doesn't mean that we're going to suddenly lose track of that momentum and uh, it, we're going to like give in and not have that fight. Uh, you don't have to constantly be making yourself this feral, hostile creature that doesn't have anything but fight in you in order to continue. You can allow yourself a moment of reprieve to have a, a soft step in a direction and it doesn't always have to be in fighting that allows for its um, restriction. Thank you. Anybody else in staff, and then we're going to close staff. Yes. Hi. Uh, I would like to point out that legislation like this, although we really shouldn't need it um, under the Constitution, we do. Uh, I'd like to point out that this could be very helpful to the homeless community at the moment, uh, because it is illegal to sleep outside or on benches. Although, practically, the police leave them alone often, because honestly, where else are they going to go? They direct them down there. They do direct them down there, but if something happens wherein a police officer wants to harass a um, uh, harass or, or otherwise disturb a member of the homeless community, they can cite that legislation. Mm -hmm. I think getting this overturned would be helpful. All right, we've got two more in staff for the rest of the proposals for the <coughs> evening. We're going to have five people staff as max. All right, so we've got Chris and then or Vivek and then Chris, and then staff is closed on this proposal. Vivek. I'm hearing the concerns of the other members of this group, and I understand. And I also appreciate Kat's statements, as well as the gentleman's, for um, some reason and some equanimity. Um, but I think we can accommodate these concerns by just reasserting or adding a friendly amendment to it, which states that by endorsement, we're not agreeing to any limitations to free speech, just to Kanawa, and that the best way to protect our freedoms, our core freedoms, is to exercise them, not through sanction from city council. So you're you're essentially you're essentially giving a friendly amendment that we have a disclaimer with yeah. this with this language. Yeah. Okay. And uh, can I get a temp check on that? Because that seems kind of revolutionary. All in favor? All opposed to the Zix disclaimer? Exercising as opposed to language is the best way to live our rights. 
Okay. All right. Um, Chris, your last one stack. Yeah, I just wanted to say, like, to anybody who's against it, in order to be effective, you've got to do something. Like, people are against writing letters to the senators. Nobody's doing any court challenges for this. Nobody's out protesting it. So you've got to do something. Uh, I mean, to anybody who's against this, what are, what are you doing? Uh, what are you doing to, pro to, pro to call out the, the, the lack of there being a, a park that's open 24 hours? That's all I want to say. All right. Okay. At this time, we're going to vote on Alan's Orva endorsement of Marty Jewell's proposal on the city council that Kanawha be declared a free speech zone. And we're going to have a dis, well, as the temp check said, as the body told me, you guys would be interested in having a disclaimer, something saying that we're not so concerned about the language. Point of process. Okay. Um, if I understood correctly, uh, Alan has the right to uh, agree or disagree to the amendment. Yes. Has Alan had that opportunity? Thank you very much, Alan. Do you did you hear the Vic's friendly amendment? I did. Could he repeat it? <laughs> yeah. This is something that's being introduced that this group would would uh, uh, would endorse at City Council, which has has um, treated us pretty poorly as far as the First Amendment and the Constitution has gone. And my suggestion is, if this person wants to get endorsed by by, and I'm talking about Marty Jewell, maybe the um, maybe the proposal or the legislation he puts forward is what we just wrote is that the United States Constitution supersedes any statutory law and the First Amendment. Maybe that should be the only thing we can do. Well, it, whatever I did, I just said it. So however it got out, that's my opinion. The First Amendment is the supreme law of the land, right? I see you there, and I'm going to keep going. Process. What I hear this friendly amendment that Chris has is that we essentially endorse the Constitution instead of endorse the Endorse what we just wrote that during that break. That are already within them. Instead of restricting it. We don't t they don't tell us what we okay. do. Right. We tell them. We tell Marty or Gift. That, that was not a point of process. Right. I, mean, right. Not I, I understand. Alright. Right. So, Alan, do you want to take that friendly proposal yeah, that they gave you and reword the uh, um, proposal here? And after that, we're going to move on to the next proposal. Madam Facilitator, I, I, I declare that the ready is in here. Listen to it. Orva declares that the First Amendment of the United States Constitution supersedes any statutory restrictions opposed upon it. Orva recognizes the core importance of first freedoms to a healthy democracy, we urge our city council to recognize their oath to
to protect and defend the Constitution. Orva applauds and endorses this ordinance as a first step in what we urge to be a full removal of all local time, place, and manner restrictions on First Amendment rights. It's all there, folks. All right, so we're going to... And, and I really have to say that the only reason why I brought it tonight is that if you endorse it tonight, it allows me and some small number, perhaps some medium number of people who are interested in seeing this passing, the mechanism of our media and publicity to attempt to do that. Plain and simple. If it goes on any longer, I will withdraw. All right, so we're not voting on a statement. We're voting on a sentiment here, essentially. Good night. All right, so here we are. All in favor of supporting Alan's sentiment. Can I see your hands? All opposed. Can I see your hands? All right, so all we just consensed that we are in support of, of supporting our Stacks are going to be limited to five people and you got three minutes each. All right, so next proposal. Next one, Zach. Bentley, you're up.